Hello and welcome back to Live Drawing with Octopolis. My name is Brian Miller. Today we're going to have a ton of fun drawing It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. So I hope you all are doing good and having a great day, having a great week, and uh, ready to have some fun today. My computer's having a little freak out, so I'm going to quit a few things here. It's like, no, Streamlabs, Twitch, and Photoshop, that's like one thing too many. Okay, it's calmed down now. I think we're going to survive. Uh, hope you guys are having a great time, though. Hope everyone's getting ready for Halloween. I know I am. I mean, I think I was born ready for Halloween, but I'm definitely uh, getting more in the Halloween spirit this year. The weather's starting to cool off. Seems like fall is here. And I'm continuing my spooky Halloween theme with a little Charlie Brown art. I thought that'd be a fun one. Snoopy is always one of my favorite characters and uh, I know there's been a lot of a lot of hoopla as they would say uh, recently because the uh, the Charlie Brown specials are moving from CBS to Apple TV after decades so everyone's everyone's upset because change is bad right <laughs> Uh, hey, good to see you there, Les Dudas. Welcome to all viewers. Uh, I know not all of you can join the chat. Some of you are listening in your car or tuned in at work, but I appreciate you watching today. Should be a fun day. It's going to kind of do my, my tribute to the Great Pumpkin. Uh, inspired a little bit by... Oh, a little bit by the books and a little bit by the posters for the special. So just trying to take some of my favorite elements and put them together. Uh, Let's do this. Says nothing is allowed to change ever, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Change is bad. Change is bad. I think we were talking the other day about uh, uh, Adam Sandler's new film, Hubie Halloween, and. Uh, I saw some news story where now that it hasn't it hasn't been received as like Adam Sandler's most genius film ever, and again I didn't hate it. I took it for what it was, just, just dumb comedy. That's fine. Um, but I guess now I I didn't read the article, so I don't know the exact quote. But like presumably Sandler is saying like, oh I, I made it bad on purpose because I'm trying to get out of my contract. Or I'm like I don't believe that, not for a second. When they're when they're paying him that much money, no, I don't think that's true. I don't I don't think so. That's like making a bad movie and you come out and you're like, you're like, oh, it was it was bad because it was a joke. Uh, Les Dude says the bar was set kind of high after Murder Mystery, which was pretty fun. Yeah, Murder Mystery was okay, and you know, it it was full of action and had good uh, locations and stuff. And they clearly set it up for a sequel. And you know, a lot of people are bemoaning. They're like, oh, Hubie Halloween wasn't as good as this or as good as that. I'm like, look, it's just it was just supposed to be just a dumb comedy. And it delivered on what it promised, you know? I mean, I'm not even defending it. I'm just, I just think it's funny how people are so like, we must destroy Adam Sandler now. I'm like, you know, he's, he's made, he's made a lot of, bad movies in the past and he's made some good and entertaining movies and you know it's just kind of it's kind of like art they're not all masterpieces people it's okay to not like one but it's funny people are like oh, i've been a lifelong fan and i'll never watch his movies again i'm like whatever the very next thing that gets released you'll watch But people are people are crazy. Chow time says peanuts. Yeah, we're talking about the controversy with uh, all the peanuts specials moving to to Apple TV Plus. How some people are freaking out about it. So I thought this would be a good one to draw today. A little bit of it's a great pumpkin Charlie Brown action. So 
So I just want to rough in some like spooky trees up here at the top. And then we can come in and have like a moon and some stars and stuff. Should be fun. I want to thank everybody who watched Christy last night on the Women of Comics panel on YouTube. Uh, that was quite fun. What a great, great panel, wasn't it? I mean, just so much talent. Nice to hear some of those stories. I could have heard a lot more stories. That's for sure. Um... Chow says, quick deviation, there's another tiki place in town called Suffering Bastard. That's awesome. Hope you guys check it out if you haven't already. We would love to hear all about it. Um, I saw something, you know those all those different React channels on YouTube, like kids react to songs from the 90s, and then it's like 40-year-olds react to songs from yesterday, you know, that kind of stuff. Or, you know, kids play with toys from the 70s. Apparently there's one that's all Irish people reacting. Who knew it was the thing? Um, but one of them was uh, Irish people react to bourbon drinks, and one of the drinks was the suffering bastard. And it was it was interesting to, you know, like the mask and like, you know, oh, is there a wee bit of gin in here and like that kind of stuff. It's really funny. Um, let's do this. Says yeah, that was cool last night. It was cool. It was fun. It was nice to see uh, to see Christy get invited to that and. Um, Thought she it was seemed like it was very well done in such a great group of panelists that was that was so impressive to me I mean I've known quite a few of those people for years and some of them don't just pop up for anything or anyone you know so it was nice to see it was very nice to see and it was really cool to see um, Sora's uh, Kickstarter funded within like the first 10 minutes of going live. It was smart of her to have it go live like right as the panel was going live. That was really cool. So nice that even during this sort of like pandemic time we can get fans to turn up and participate. So it was good. And there seemed to only be like one creepy old man in the chat. So you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's a win. Because <laughs> anytime you do like a, for some reason, you right, you do a, a panel with female creators that should be empowering and you always get that one like creepy old dude who shows up and you're like, really? Really? Uh, this dude says, uh, the Canuck was getting annoying hope I hope that's no one here. Yeah, I hope it's no one here either. But no, it was cool. And it was nice to see everybody in their Halloween costumes and Oh, thanks for the hydrate. Appreciate it, Chow. Cheers to you, man. Evan's not here yet, but I will point out that it's Key Lime today. Key Lime. I, uh, I doubled the light output onto my artwork, but my light on my face is in a different location. It's throwing me off. I'm like, oh, there's weird shadows today. But it's been kind of a crazy day, so I had to like get everything set up at the last minute. I'm doing a rush cover for Terry Moore for one of his new projects. And so I managed to get all the background done, uh, colored up before the stream, and then when this is done, I'll go in and finish it. And we were getting out the first issue of Endless Winter Colors for DC today. And so that's been very, very hectic. Anytime there's a whole new 
special thing like that. It's always a bit crazy because you'll have, you know, established characters that you know what they look like and stuff, and then you'll have like new special villains and things, and it seems like all their their looks get changed, you know, ten times between when the comic starts and when it goes to press. <laughs> Child Time says, it's a ghost or a djinn, as we learned the other day. But no, it was great to see so many people from here on the YouTube chat last night. It was really fantastic. And let's do this, or Child Time, wasn't one of you guys said something about Christie's microphone was like the only good one or something? I thought that was funny. And the silly thing is we don't spend a fortune on our gear. Like, not even close. Like, if I actually had money to spend, I'd, I'd go crazy. But, you know, like I said before, I think I think it's just a $39 or a $40 fee fine <laughs> microphone from Amazon. But it sounds a million times better than the uh, more than a decade old snowball mic that I used to have, so... It's kind of funny how the what was like the top stuff just kind of becomes junk over time, you know. <laughs> Chow's like, nope, it wasn't me. Les says, I think everyone else was just using the mic built in their webcams. It was very tinny. Yeah. Yeah, and especially poor Deb Tucci, man. Hers, you could barely hear her. Tiny little details on Woodstock here. Tiny little details. I also thought it was nice to see what we always know is true is that behind a lot of the male creators that you know are very strong, powerful women who are either also creators, like in the case of Amanda um, and some of the others that were there, like Sora, um, you know, or are like just kick-ass women running the shit, running the show, you know, or sometimes doing both. So, you know, it's very difficult to be successful in that industry by yourself, especially if you're self-publishing and stuff, you know. And so it, it takes, at minimum, like it seems like a two-person partnership, you know. And that's if you're lucky. If you're lucky, you can pull it off. Oh, isn't this fun? I can't think of the last time I got to draw Charlie Brown and Snoopy. I used to do quite a bit of work. Um, originally for King Features. I used to do tons of stuff for King Features. So, you know, Popeye and Peanuts and Betty Boop and some of those characters. Um... And then, I'm trying to think, Peanut Switch Licensing Companies or something. And then I actually did a ton for like the Asian market peanut stuff. And then that all went away, I think, when they changed again. So, oh, and we did work though on the big, giant, like, I don't know, 100 page peanuts book for uh, Boom Studios, I think, back in the day that tied into one of the peanuts movies. So, I kind of had this like on again, off again history of peanuts. As a kid, I really liked Snoopy and Charlie Brown. Tons of the like collected comic strip books and toys. I think I even had like a FM radio, a Snoopy FM radio that was just it was Snoopy, Snoopy's doghouse with him on top, and you could pull Snoopy up to either make a handle so you could carry it around, or you could pull Snoopy up higher, and he was actually the antenna to get better reception. So like he had metal built into like, so that he could be the handle or the antenna, like the higher you raised him up. So 
I don't know why I remember that so strongly, but and of course every kid wanted the Snoopy snow cone machine. I think I got mine second hand at a garage sale, which is kind of gross when you start to think about it, but still wanted it. I was like, yeah, Snoopy snow cone machine, hell yeah. Snoopy was a, I mean, I guess he still is a big deal. I don't know, but he was a really big deal when I was a kid, it seemed like. I remember, it seemed like when the Centennial came around, it was all kinds of Snoopy merch tied to that. Also, uh, I'm originally from Kansas City and we have a theme park there called Worlds of Fun. And at least when I was a kid, it's completely independent. It didn't have anything to do with Six Flags or Disney or any other company. So it's just its own thing. And um, the theme of the place, Worlds of Fun, was based on around the world in 80 days. So there was different lands but I guess they had a license or something because in the America land, they had um, an airplane ride, like a Barnstormers airplane ride based on Snoopy and the Red Baron. It was so much fun. Oh, thank you for the posture check, Chow. Appreciate it. Oh, I need that. It's been such a, such a weird, I think I've just been running at, at full steam since the move. And I think last night it really caught up with me and I'm just feeling so run down. So my goal is to get my work done today and have a little downtime tonight. Since there's, sadly, since there's no TNT tonight. But the good news is it looks like if everything works out with Christy's schedule that we might have a TNT next week. So, like I said, it might not be weekly anymore, but we're gonna try try doing what we can. Oh my gosh, thank you, Chow. Thanks for the cheer, man. 20 bits and I love the, the gravestones. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, let's see if we can do any kind of justice to Linus's crazy hair here. Cause it's so nuts, so crazy. Now, do you guys know is that new Borat film is that already out, or is it still coming? I haven't. Obviously, I haven't seen it yet, but um. Hearing lots of buzz. <laughs> Chow says, oh, I'm busting out an old fashioned after I'm done with work. Yeah, that sounds good. I think it's a good good night for that. You know, make an old fashioned and sit on the patio or something. It hasn't been a especially like stressful week or anything. It's just, I think, you know, in all of our spare time, all we've been doing is working on this house, moving things from point A to point B, moving things from storage to the garage, moving things from the garage back to storage, you know, all that stuff. And there's just never been not even a moment of downtime. And I think it just all kind of caught up to me. Just feeling really, really run down. So I just have to power through today and get some of these projects done in a timely fashion so that I don't have to work on them tonight. That's the goal anyway. Uh, Chow says, are you wearing a costume for next week's stream or doing anything for Halloween? Now, normally Halloween is like my favorite of the year, but obviously with COVID, not obviously, with COVID, I'm I'm not doing a bunch of stuff because I don't want to like, in, you know, try to like entice the neighborhood kids to come to our house or anything like that. I uh, hadn't thought about costume for next week, but maybe I have a really nice Fifth Doctor costume that I made years ago. Uh, I don't think I have the hat anymore, but I have the rest of it, so that could be a possibility. But I love, I love dressing up. I love wearing costumes. I would, I would go big 
every year on Halloween if I could. Oh, let's do it says the, he thinks the, the new Borat comes out tomorrow. Well, that makes sense. Get it out for the weekend, I guess. I did see the little teaser thing about Rudy Giuliani in there. I'm not going to get political. But it smells fishy. He's like, oh, I just went in to take off a microphone and I had to I had to put my hand down my pants to get the microphone out. In this hotel room, laying on my back with what I believe to be an underage woman in there with me. I'm like, eh. Seems like a lot of happenstance. I guess we'll be the judge when we see the film. Ooh, thanks for the hydrate chow. So once I fill in some of these black areas, I'm gonna bust out the paints. I'll start putting some color on this one. And guys, next week, really exciting. So Tuesday on the live drawing stream, I'm gonna start this 11 by 17 ginormous uh, I'll just say it's a Mandalorian based or inspired illustration commission uh, with two characters and I think it'll be a two-parter it might even be a three-parter we'll see but I think the goal will be to get it all drawn on Tuesday and then to um, paint it on Thursday because they do want it full color and if I remember, I'm gonna go on Amazon and order some some gouache paints to try out. See if we can get a little a little nicer consistency. But if not, we'll make we'll make this stuff work. But it's gonna be a good one. Definitely don't want to miss that. And it'll be nice to have a really good Star Wars commission again. And I haven't shouted it out online yet, but if you're one of the regulars and you want a commission for yourself or someone else for the holidays, now is the time to order. So contact me soon. Um, we're hearing from the Postal Service like December 10th might be the cutoff this year um, to ship things to, for like guaranteed and that's just about five or seven days earlier than normal so uh, I think every everything's gonna be needing you know decisions need to be made sooner this year right so anybody wants a sketch now is the time to make that happen so that there's time for me to, to draw it for you and get it shipped uh, child time's like I'm so so excited for Mandalorian season 2 yeah me too man uh, child says I'm wearing an Uncle Roger costume Uncle Roger Uncle Roger why have, I shouldn't why don't I why isn't that registering with me I'm probably my mind is focused on something else. Like Uncle Roger. It'd be funny if you were in a Buck Roger costume. You would be in Yeah, you could be Buck Rogers and then you could just find like a one of those like three foot tall baby dolls and just spray paint it silver. It'd be like beady beady beady. think we're ready for color bring on the color hey Monique good to see you drawing a little 
great pumpkin action today. Uh, Chow Time says, uh, Uncle Rogers, the YouTube guy that blew up a couple weeks ago when he commented on a person from the BBC making egg fried rice. Huh. I guess I'm not keeping up with my memes. I, I should know that. I have another friend who's always on top of memes, so I'm sure he knows that one. Nick says, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. It show sure enough is. Start with the the sky, so we can paint in some moon and stars and whatnot. Then we'll move on to the pumpkin and the characters and everything. Yeah, I always loved this one as a kid. I don't know, what was your favorite of the Charlie Brown specials? Did you did you like one more than the other? What was the one where Snoopy moved out and went back to live with somebody else? I can't think of what that one was. I think that one was kind of traumatic as a kid. It'd be like, no, Snoopy, you can't leave Charlie Brown. <laughs> like, don't do it. Like, it's a trap, Snoopy. <laughs> she just, she's just after your money. Oh, wait. Something like that. I think I will paint in the sky except for the moon and then I'll go back later and with the white gel pen add in a few stars and stuff in there. I think that'll look pretty cool. As I always say, that'll be the goal. That will be the goal. Try to get it kind of smooth if I can. Um, oh, Monique says the, or, uh, excuse me, Chow Time says the Christmas s special is his favorite, for sure. For sure. I don't know, this one's pretty high on my list. I've always liked this one a lot. And it seems like because we start Christmas earlier and earlier every year, you know, Halloween gets less and less love now than it used to, you know. And growing up in the Midwest, we still had things like hay rides and all that stuff and out here in Arizona the corn mazes are really popular they do some giant sized ones out here I don't know if any of that stuff will be open this year or not I guess it probably will be since this is one of the states that doesn't believe in COVID and so they don't really have any restrictions so I'm sure everything will be open Oh, um, when he says Snoopy Come Home. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. I couldn't remember the title of that one. That's the one that always made me sad. I was like, no, Snoopy, don't leave Charlie Brown. He needs you.
I was, I was maybe a little too emotional about Snoopy and Charlie Brown. Sure, Snoopy would have had a great life with that other girl. But I just couldn't stand for it. I'm like, no, no, Snoopy. You belong with Charlie Brown and you know it. is for you guys if you can see how wet this paint goes on sometimes but I'm doing it wet on dry just because it's it's uh, faster for the stream but this would be a fun one to do like a wet on wet just to see how it turned out but I'd have to probably let the inks dry the black inks dry for like a whole day before I could wet the paper and then wet the paper and do the sky. But it'd be pretty cool. You could let some, like a lot more blending and stuff happen with the colors that way. But other than um, other than the peanut specials, what are some of your favorite Halloween movies or specials? And do you count Nightmare Before Christmas as Halloween, or do you count it as Christmas? I know that seems to be a hot button topic for some people. And based on the trailer, do you think that Christmas Chronicles 2 stole their basic plot from Nightmare Before Christmas? Not the details, but just the basic outline. Like, they watch Nightmare Before Christmas and they're like, yeah, yeah, this will work. We can run with this idea for our sequel. It'll be fine. Um... Child Time says Thriller. NeuroNerd says I've never seen Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh my gosh, NeuroNerd, I can't believe that. It's such a cute film. Even from just a musical standpoint, um, and the and the art artistry of it, I think but that's a good one. I know when we would take students to the Middle East. Most of them thought of Nightmare Before Christmas as a Christmas film. Like to them, that's what it, it, it was to be watched and enjoyed at Christmas time. And I know other people who think of it more as a Halloween film. So I, I guess there might not be a right answer there. Uh, but it's good to see you today, Nerd Nerd. Thanks for joining us. Um. Oh, Northern Nerd says there was a cool prop culture episode about the film. Yes, man, I love that episode. So good. And I think, didn't they interview Danny Elfman on that one too? And he had one of the props. Oops. Oopsie, oopsie. Sorry about that little guy. We'll touch that up later. Shot Time says, I want to see Prop Culture Indiana Jones. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Uh, 
NeuroNerd, did um when you were in school, did you have Miss Macris as your music teacher in like elementary school? I was having fond memories of all the Halloween time Christmas class and sing-alongs and Monster Mash and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Nerd Nerd says, yep. Quinch Press says, good afternoon. Nerd Nerd says, all, or, all the Halloween songs. Yeah, I just remember being a kid and having that, that music class and um, we would just sing like entire Halloween albums it felt like and I loved it. I loved it so much. Uh, Nerd Nerd says, someone posted all of them on Facebook one year. Oh, that's cool. Good to see you, Quinch Press. And Quinch, since you, you weren't here earlier, I just want to say thanks again to everybody who was on YouTube last night sharing Christy on during her Women of Comics panel. That was awesome. Appreciate all of you and your support. It was really nice to see so many familiar names popping up in the chat. I liked how they were able to, to pick up uh, specific chat entries and showcase that on screen. Uh, that was nice. I know they were using the same software as when I did the, the live stream with uh, Coffin Comics, but this was different people doing it, and I liked that they, they actually you know, picked out people from the chat and asked their questions and stuff. I thought that was really cool. Because, you know, if you're going to chat, you might as well interact with people. That's kind of the point. I was trying to think if I had a favorite Halloween song. I don't know that I actually do. I think I, think I just like the whole, like, Halloween vibe. You know, like the whole, the whole milieu, if you will. Although, I don't know, do you guys count Rocky Horror as Halloween? Because Time Warp would be pretty high up there. <laughs> uh, Quinch says, it was pretty nice then to include Cadet Christie. Or include a cadet like Christie. That was nice. Uh, Let's do says, there's a con over here on the East Coast that puts on live stream Q&As with creators, artists during quarantine. And they take a lot of questions from the chat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if you're going to make it, if you're going to have a chat and do it live, why not? I mean, I get that some of these people are on like super strict schedules and they're, they've got their agenda or script or whatever, but you know, it's kind of rewarding when you can interact with people and not just stick to some script or something, you know? All right, it's not too bad. Get a little dark in there, but. I always think this blue is the hardest one to work with. Uh, Chow says Thanksgiving is my favorite and least favorite is Christmas Day. Well, I get, I get why Thanksgiving is people's favorites. And so why is your least favorite Christmas Day? Is that because it's sort of like the end of Christmas or are you like an anti-commercialism thing we should know about? Oh, Chow, before I forget, all of you guys, actually, have you been getting the commercials, the ads for Expedition Roasters, which is just like private label mail order coffee, but it's all, um, how do we put this? It's all Disney adjacent. So like they've, they're very clearly marketing their different coffee as stuff related to Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff related to the Haunted Mansion and stuff related to the Enchanted Tiki Room, but they never actually use any of those Disney copyrighted terms. 
but they they definitely are like they're writing the like super fine line. And I wonder if any, if any of you guys have seen that. And then I also wonder, uh, you know, B are they successful? And C, if so, how long is it until Disney lawyers, you know, show up on their doorstep and are like, look, guys, we know you're skating the thin line here, but you might be a little too close. On one hand, I like super kudos to them for, you know, not just completely ripping off the Disney uh, brands, but, but trying to be like, you know, for the people who love going to theme parks, like that kind of stuff, right? That's their, their message. So I think I, I'm curious as to who's behind it. It seems too well executed to be just some fly-by-night company. Like I've seen people that are like straight up rip off Disney and straight up rip off Star Wars and stuff like that. And those are, are usually sloppy cash grabs. This seems like a very well orchestrated business plan. So I'm very curious to know if you've seen it. I hear Evan. Evan must be here. Good to hear you. Good to see you, Evan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Chow says. Yep, it's the end of the season, really. I love the holiday season, so... Also, I've not seen those commercials I want in. Yeah, I was like... I thought of you the minute I saw it. I was like, why didn't Chow or I think of this? <laughs> Especially because I've known about private label coffee clubs you can make and stuff for years. And I was like, oh, I just never have a good idea for that stuff. And then I saw this. And I was like, oh my God, it was right in front of me the whole time. Um, Chow says, there's a magic candle company that pretty much sells Disney scents. Ah, are they doing the same thing? They're just like, they're not calling it Pirates of the Caribbean. They're like, it's the redhead pirate or it's, you know, you know, New Orleans, something, something like all that stuff. Oh, thank you for the cheer, Evan. It was good to see you last night on, uh, the women of comics panel. Evan, thank you for coming out and showing your support too. It was really nice to see so many, Familiar names, familiar faces pop up. Christy and I really appreciate you guys. Chow says, exactly. Yeah, well, you have to uh, keep an eye open for Expedition Roadsters. Roasters, not Roadsters. <laughs> Two different things. Um, or just like go search it or something because I was like, oh, I was like, I thought of you instantly, Chow. I was like, man, Chow, Chow and I could have been gazillionaires, but instead, instead we won't be. Um, I got a new uh, message from Patreon um, that they've just unlocked or rolled out uh, some new merchandising stuff. So if you checked out Joe Crony's uh, Patreon, you've already seen it because he launched on the day that they, they launched that. Um, but they've unlocked it for other creators now. Uh, I'm sure there were some big name creators who had access to it ahead of time. Um, but basically what, what we have the ability to do now is only certain types of merchandise that uh, Patreon's involved with but to give people rewards like every three months or every six months. Let me know, A, if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, B, would it cause you to move up a level because they're recommending, recommending it for a higher monthly level uh, than most of you are on. Most of you are on the $10 level. Um, and then C, do you think that would help us bring other people on board because right now I think that's the area that we're struggling with the most is like we have an awesome group of people on Patreon but we really need to like at the very minimum double that number to make it worthwhile for us to create all that content um, so we're having so much fun with it but we just we're really at a little bit of loss on how to how to get more people interested. You know, we're running Google ads and Facebook ads and not really seeing uh, any kind of result from that. It's all kind of been word of mouth so far. Um, so so definitely, you know, let, let us know what you think because 
sometimes it's easier when you're sort of on the outside looking in at what we're doing to be critical and give us good feedback than it is for us on the on the inside being like, you know, we don't know what works, like that kind of thing. You know, why isn't this working? So we definitely appreciate you guys. Um, especially in this time right now, I've had so many creators contact me just this week and be like, Brian, I'm, I'm desperate. I need to start a, a Patreon or I need to start a Twitch channel. What can I do? Help me, please. And, you know, I'm trying to give them good advice, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I'm, I'm still really new to this stuff too. <laughs> Chow says we still can be millionaires. I hope so, man. I mean, well, I don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I feel like I feel like I've, I've missed my window, but I will remain ever hopeful that I could some at some point in my life find myself if not not a millionaire. I don't even care about that, but like not having to worry about every little dime and every little dollar. That would be nice. We were watching the stream last night. I was listening to Jeff Smith's wife, and I was like, man, she's clearly really got a head for the business side of things. You know, if she's the one cutting the deals with Scholastic and all the licensing and everything, and they're the only ones being like, oh, we don't need to mess with Kickstarter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're fine. It's just like, she's clearly got a head for business. Good for them. I don't know if that's a good trait of mine or a bad trait of mine, but I don't ever, that I'm aware of, I don't believe that I ever am jealous or upset of other people's successes. I, I tend to be like inspired by that. I know that's not the case for everyone, but that tends to be how my brain works. I tend to be like a You know, celebrate people's success. Try to learn from those that are successful. And I, I've known all along that my chosen profession has its ups and downs, and for me, most of it's been up. So I can't, I can't complain. Chat Times says, millionaires, although don't lack money, they're constantly working. Oh, man, that's so true. That's so true. Yeah, we, we know. We have, I, I don't know. Some of them are friends, but some are just people we know. And Definitely the ones that are the most successful. They're always, always hustling. They're always on it. I was trying to explain that to somebody once, and they were asking me, like, oh... Don't you, can't you wait until you retire to do X or Y or Z? And I was like, I, as an artist at least, I mean, I could see retiring from comics or retiring from some industry, but I can't imagine ever being like, you know, I'm done with art. I'll never pick up a, a pencil again. Like I just, I think I have, I have this creation thing in me that I just have to make things, you know, rather than that's like artwork or you know, I think it could be other things, you know, but just, just making and creating, I think, is, is innate to who I am. And so I can't even imagine a time when I wouldn't be doing something like that. And I certainly don't crave it. I'm not like, a, oh, I can't wait till I don't have to do that again. That's just not how my brain works at all. But I also think that's the difference between, you know, some of us are defined by what we do for better or worse, because I know it's not always healthy, you know, mentally healthy or whatever to be defined by what you do. But, you know, for better or worse, I, I'm defined by what I do. Like, you know, my value as a, as a human being on this planet is based solely on the artwork that I create and what I produce. 
and like it or hate it, that's true. Um, whereas other people that have, you know, quote unquote, normal jobs, they can clock out at a certain time and go and live their lives outside of that job and have the weekend or whatever and come back and clock in on Monday and start over. And I know plenty of people like that. And, I, you know, there's times that I'm jealous of them for being able to not be defined by what it is they do. But then there's other times that, you know, the, that same freedom it affords them also comes with limitations. So it's some sort of weird trade-off. I guess I haven't really analyzed it, but it is definitely some sort of some sort of trade-off. Well, I haven't had to complain about leaf blowers in a while, but they're working on the house next door to us. So if you can if you can hear it, they just fired up the leaf blowers. It's not super loud yet, so we'll see if they stay on the far side or they come over here. Uh, Chow says, not to get too personal here, I always wanted to go to the creative track. Long story short, I had to put that on hold to get a big boy job. Luckily, I'm going to feel that I can take care of the bills and do creative things on the side. I think that's really admirable, Chow. Um, you know, on one hand, I'm like, oh, I, 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 I'm so fortunate that I got right into my chosen field, like, you know, right out of school and got hired by Marvel Comics. And, I mean, it's, you know, there's nothing to complain about. But... On the other side, I think people like yourself, you have your hard work in other areas has afforded you a flexibility that most creatives don't ever get. And that's the, the flexibility to either, you know, only do the projects that you've decided you want to create on your own or at least be picky and choosy about the projects you do because you have that uh extra bit of stability because you know as an artist what, what we're trading is we're trading uh, stability for opportunity right and when it, when the balance is in your favor it's fantastic but when the balance falls out of your favor it is horrible um, and so you have generated some stability and you probably had to forego some creative opportunities to get that stability but now you're in a place where that stability buys you the flexibility to, ha to to create your own opportunities. So I say cheers to you, man, and kudos to you, because I'm sure you made some sacrifices to make that happen. And I'm sure there were times that you, you weren't sure you were going to be able to do the creative things you want to do, and now you have the ability to have it all and do it all. So I think that's really smart and definitely you know, not an option that I was aware was on the table until a few years ago when I sort of had another friend in the same same situation. Another option is to just become a patron and a supporter. Like, I have a friend who, you know, I don't know if he could have been the next Jim Lee or not, but, um, you know, he says that when he was younger, he was at that, that level and because of his upbringing and his parents, he had to go do, you know, a corporate job and stuff. But now he is, like, legitimately a millionaire. And if he wanted to do that creative stuff, even just for fun, he could now. But instead, um, he chooses to support other creators and hire artists to do special projects for him and his company and um, that sort of thing. And, you know, or... Some of it's creative, some of it's maybe just, you know, different charities and things, but he he still has that creative vision within him, but now he's using it to help other creators, and I think that's that's also something that's really admirable. Um, Evan says, I feel you need to promote your YouTube channel with samples of coloring or some of the art you're offering on Patreon. Yeah, I think that's that's true, Evan. I 100% I agree with you there. That's been a time management thing with the move, but yes, you are you are correct. And I appreciate that input because sometimes I do just need to be reminded, hey, dummy, you need to do this. Uh, Evan says, let's say if I want to learn how to color something, I'm going right to Google. You'll need to pop up in the search and build a following, and those will bring up more patrons. Yeah, that's really, really smart, Evan.
thank you for that. I appreciate that. I know um, <laughs> nothing's worse than when you do something like I just did where you solicit. You're like, hey, I want your opinion, right? Um, and then everybody, you, people give the opinion. You're like, you're like, yeah, but I don't want to do that. Or that sounds like work. I'm like, no, no, I know you're right. So I do appreciate your input. Uh, Evan says, maybe get some testimony from your students. That is a really good idea, Evan. I think we have enough... Uh, people and enough time in that we could do that solicit from you and some of the others so yeah I think that's good thank you thank you so much Evan I appreciate it it's definitely a challenge being a an artist who doesn't really think of himself as a as a business person trying to navigate all these waters I've, I've, I've had the luxury of most of my career of just creating and the publishers and the companies and you know they sort of take care of everything and uh, now I'm just like I feel like I'm starting from scratch <laughs> you know all right let's do Linus and Charlie Brown's clothes I think I think we'll save all the greenery at the bottom for last because I think it's gonna really muddy up the water when we get there Oh, I have to ask you guys, have you seen the um, the little five minute video for the Adobe comic thing that they announced yesterday? Um, I'm not reacting as harshly as a lot of people in the industry are. I tend to believe that a tool is just a tool and it's whatever you do with it that matters, but I understand everyone's harsh reaction because Adobe is basically saying like you can make comic books with just a couple clicks of a button and they keep using the word pro comics over and over in the video and If you've seen the video, you know It doesn't look nothing like no pro comics like it's not even close, right? Um, so they're kind of selling people this pipe dream uh, But there's you know, there's some animation features in there and and some other stuff that could potentially uh, be cool in the hands of of someone who was a good artist or a good creator and knew what they were doing. So I won't bash on the tool, but I will say that Adobe's marketing approach um, was sort of poor. Oh, hey, good to see you, Tlaylock. Thank you so much for the host. Really appreciate it. I haven't seen you in a while, so we're good to see you today. Um, and Monique, thank you for the kind words. I'm really having fun with this one today. I've been trying to just kind of relax and dive into these Halloween ones and just have fun with them and uh, hopefully, hopefully it shows. I just I love Halloween. I love cartoons and just trying to put like a little bit of passion into these, you know. I was really feeling like super creative yesterday. I was working on one of these projects that had kind of been on the back burner, and um, so it's kind of nice to, to feel that way, you know, to feel like, oh, it's it's all it's all happening like it should. Uh, Evan says, does Patreon offer affiliate links? I don't think so, Evan. I will say I'm, I'm a little disappointed in their like marketing stuff. Like on my Shopify store, I can plug directly into my Google ad account and I can plug directly into my Facebook ad account and Pinterest and all that kind of stuff. And Patreon doesn't offer any of that. It's It's, it's kind of sad in a way. It's like, they just, they're like, here's your Patreon thing. You go, you go figure it out, you know? So, uh, you know, you have to go build your Facebook ad and build your Google ad and it's not connected to your Patreon. So you have to, you know, it, it makes it like five times more effort than it would be on some other platform, unfortunately. So let's do just a little bit of shading, I think, on their clothes. Let's see if I can keep this from getting too dark. I'm trying to go for just the, there we go. Just the teeniest little bit of orange mixed into Charlie Brown's yellow there to 
give it a little bit of a shadow. I guess I could probably go for a smaller brush too, huh? You'd think it was some sort of challenge, you know, that I'm just like, I'm gonna do every painting with the biggest brush just to see what happens. Yeah, there we go. Um, Quinch says, sorry, was being too much of an adult. So started to sound like Peanuts adult, that's funny. And Monique says, lol, the teacher voice. That's the sound I made. I like, that's what I sound like to my husband. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, there's two things I think as a kid I always related to. I thought the teacher voice thing was perfect on Charlie Brown. And I love that on Muppet Babies, you never, you only saw, that ba the babysitter, Barbara Billingsley, whatever you want to call it, you only saw her feet or whatever, her feet and her legs. I thought those two things were just like, as a kid, those were like perfect spot on things. Quinch Press says like, walk tall and paint with a big brush. Is there like, is there bro art? Is there like testosterone bro art? Like, is that a thing? Cause it'd be like, I only paint with a man size brush. I make manly art with man size brushes. All right, speaking of man size brushes, I am not gonna use a man size brush on, <laughs> on Woodstock. Woodstock is gonna get a smaller brush. That's just insane. All my art has trucks, guns, Bucks, and it's all painted with a chainsaw. You could probably do some pretty cool splatter paint with a chainsaw. Oh, you know what? There is bro art, guys. I know what it is now. Have you ever heard of Iconic? I'm not sure how they spell it. But it's um, a canvas art company. And what most of it is, is like Wall Street quotes, like a bag of money with like success on there or something like that. If you've ever seen their ads, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I was like, oh my God, there is bro art. I just, I just remembered. It is a thing, it exists. Like, if you want to see testosterone on a canvas, come to Iconic. All right, let's do some skin tone. Let's see if that's light enough. Or if it's too light. A little too light. Mm. Come on, Charlie Brown. Get your shit together, son. Don't do that, Charlie Brown. You don't want to be that way. Poor Charlie Brown. When I was a kid, we'd had to go to the city and talk to people about God and stuff on Saturday mornings, get up early and like go knock on their doors and talk to them about God. And there's this one family that we would always have to go witness to. And one of their kids was named Charlie Brown and the other one was named Sunshine. 
It always stuck with me. Charlie Brown and Sunshine. So let's see if we can do a little bit better with you. There we go. Oh, thank you, Evan. I'll. Uh, I'll click that here in just a second. I know um, Joe, he launched his Patreon and he was really upset that he didn't get like a thousand followers the first day. And I was like, no, dude. I was like, you know, the world's in turmoil right now. You can't expect that. I'm like, we're lucky to have any fans or followers. Thank you, Evan. I'm clicking on that right now and I'll save it to look at when the stream's over. Thank you so much. Uh, Quinchper says, Lucy, all you have to do is walk up to a house, ring the doorbell, and say, tricks or treats. Sally's like, are you sure it's legal? Lucy's like, of course it's legal. Sally's like, I wouldn't want to be accused of taking part in a rumble. <laughs> That's so great. I got a rock. There we go. Just a little bit of shading on the side of Charlie Brown's head. I think it might ink a little bit more shadow under their jaw lines too. Quinch Press says, I would, let's rumble. All right, let's do all this green foliage. I think we're going to need more yellow to make that work, but we'll at least get started here. Let's see if we can make ourselves like a nice golden green, more like a fall color. somewhere between green and brown. Throw a little extra red in there. That'll help it. Oh, yeah. Now yeah, we're getting somewhere. Should I ASMR the, like, paint mixing sounds? Like slosh, slosh, slosh. Now, what do we think about Wizard of Oz? Does Wizard of Oz count as a Halloween film? I feel like for my generation, it was always like more of a Thanksgiving time thing. I know for a generation older than me, it was always very much like a Halloween kind of thing. Hmm. 
I mean, it makes sense because you, you can dress up as all those characters and there's a Wicked Witch and all that. <laughs> Quinch Press says, I never really thought of it as a holiday movie, any holiday. Oh, thanks for the hydrate. Thank you, Evan. It's uh, Key Lime today, by the way, Evan. Oh, and thanks for the posture check. Oh, both of you, Monique and Evan, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I never really thought of Wizard of Oz as a holiday movie per se until the movie A Christmas Story. And then it was interesting to see that it was kind of related with Christmas in that movie. Because I guess, did it come out around Christmas time originally? I'm not sure. But I seem to remember when I was a kid, it always aired on television around the Thanksgiving time. Now, I don't know if it was closer to Halloween or closer to Thanksgiving, but it always seemed to be somewhere around that time in the fall. But yeah, as a movie itself, it doesn't really scream any sort of holiday, but I definitely associate it with the fall time of year. I think we came up with like the perfect green for this one. Uh, Evan says, that's my favorite. We're out of them. My wife forgot to get some, so I've been jonesing for some La Croix. Yeah, the, the key lime is good. Even Christy likes it. Christy doesn't like these at all. And she started taking the key lime to tennis because she likes them. So it's got just the right amount of flavor, I think. Something about it is just good. Uh, let's do it says Wizard of Oz was released in August of 1939 okay um, but it flopped and then it was re-released later so I wonder if maybe it was the re-release closer to a holiday I don't know but I guess August is still kind of the end of summer beginning of fall so it definitely kind of has that 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 feeling and then return to Oz that one's kind of spooky. Would we would we lump that in with Halloween movies, or is it again just it's like it's like holiday agnostic? It just is what it is. Well, there's one thing we can say for sure with that: Feruza Balk was in Return to Oz, and her movie The Craft can certainly be considered a Halloween movie. Although I heard they're remaking it with a new cast, which seems kind of odd. Doing a remake of the craft. All right, I'm gonna mix up a little bit darker green here for just some of these details. Uh, Let's do it says, you're right. Listen to this. Strange to think that this glorious golden oldie was a flop, but the film lost uh, gigantic for the time, 1.4 million in 1939, and only began, began making money 20 years later as a kitsch Christmas TV classic. Well, there you go. I knew it flopped when it came out, but I didn't know when they started playing it again. Yeah, it's kind of funny how many beloved movies were were total flops when they were new some things are just too too new for people to appreciate you know and i think the book was really beloved and the movie strayed so far from the book that you know it'd be like if Harry Potter if you know what when did the first Harry Potter movie come out in relation to the book let's say it was like only five years or something right so the books are still really popular it'd be like if Harry Potter came out 
and it was like Xanadu musical or something, right? People would just be like, F this. I think that's kind of how, how Wizard of Oz was perceived. Everyone's like, that's not the story I know. You go to hell, MGM. Snoopy, let's go. Ooh, my green, green is still a little wet. Still a little wet. Trying to throw a few little stars in the sky here around Snoopy and Charlie Brown. I don't have to be super strong or anything, but just enough to give it a little atmosphere. It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. That was a fun one. Hope you guys liked that one. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, Quench Press, if you'll look at some channels for us to raid, I will run the credits because I know we had a couple of cheers today, so that'll be good. And, uh, and then we'll come right back. So let me make sure I've got the... The credits all queued up here. And then I gotta go and finish Terry Moore's cover.